This is Edward October, host of October Pod on YouTube. Hear that jingle jingle? It could be Kris Kringle, or a home invader looking for an open window, a jilted lover looking for revenge, or a disgruntled co-worker hoping to spike your eggnog with arsenic. The girls of our true crime podcast are always on Santa's nice list, but the crimes they discuss are very naughty indeed. Listener discretion is advised. Hey, this is Steve from Great Lakes True Crime. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and a fantastic 2019. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Hi, Cam. See, who's getting slap happy now? Oh, I'm trying to. I've been keeping it under wraps. Put it back underneath the covers, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. So what's going on? We're on our sixth nightmare before Christmas. Halfway there, people. Halfway to the 12th day. (laughs) (laughs) Math. Anyway, for those of you just tuning in. We, we're getting a little slap happy. We are. We've been sitting down here. We're on the sixth episode taping. I'm really close to the mic. No, I didn't mean to do that. We're on the sixth episode taping. So we are. A little bit. A little slap happy. little slap happy. Yeah, but maybe. for those of you who haven't listened to the first five for some reason, we are. Maybe they just wanted number six. Maybe. Maybe they have a number phobia. Maybe. Who knows? But what we're doing is we are doing the 12 Nightmares Before Christmas. We started on Wednesday the 12th, and we are ending on the 23rd of December. We are doing this because we are taking a small little break hiatus. between a hiatus. They call it hiatus in show in the biz. In the biz. Well, we are taking a, straw, a, a small little hiatus during the Christmas holidays so we can spend time with our families. I said that happily, right? That was happy enough? Yes. Yeah, so... Uh, We will be back on January 9th, so until then, enjoy all these mini-episode-ish, or mini-ish episodes. Some are longer than the others, some are not. Basically, it's all the stuff that we think are good. We think the stories are good, we just, they're not enough for full episodes, basically, right? Yeah. And if you kind of listen, each day correlates to the number of victims that we have done which might be in bad taste but i don't not really not really bad taste we're already dead we didn't do it <laughs> now that was in bad taste <laughs> just kidding don't so anyway it. now we're on the sixth day sixth day my true love gave to me herpes my true love killed for me so with this case jen okay just a little day p- six day six little warning here um this does have some mutilation Ew. of it of young young boys Ew. okay and then you kind of find out why at the end um so it, it is a little graphic mm-hmm. especially if you're a boy mm-hmm. or a man so grab your genitals keep them safe I don't know. just that's okay i've got one coming up that okay for the girls can't leave them out you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. New York, March 9th, 1972. A little eight-year-old named Douglas Owens was found dead. He'd been stabbed 38 times. Oh, Lord. His penis was sliced, <gasps> but not severed. <sighs> oh, baby. Right after this happened, an anonymous phone tip came in to the police, and they told the officer that a man named Erno Soto was the person responsible for this child's gruesome death. However, the police did not follow up on the phone tip. Six weeks later, the killer struck again. An unnamed 10-year-old boy was brutally sodomized, Mm. then gutted by the man who also hacked off and stole his penis. Stole? Now, here's how times have changed. We always talk about this. They give this killer a nickname right the nickname is so not politically correct and it would never fly in today's world from the second murder on yeah the killer would be known as charlie chop off oh jesus right what 
Who <laughs> does that? That's wrong. Right? That's so wrong. Thank goodness, guess what? After that heinous thing, that little boy survived. That's why he's nameless. You're kidding me. Nope. That's good, huh? Well, I, kind of. Right? I, I have so many questions, but... I have way too many questions for that. October 23rd, Ugh. Wendell Hubbard, age nine, was not as lucky as the unknown boy above. Hubbard's little body was found on a rooftop in East Harlem, where he was living. Didn't you say... Wait, hold on. Didn't you say the second one was gutted? Mm-hmm. And he still survived? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. So when you go read this, all these people are like, well, what? I got to run Yeah. Wow. But I guess they found him in time to, you know... He was st- and to shove his guts back in and... He doesn't even have a penis. Those I know. I don't know. October 23rd. Wendell Hubbard, age nine, was not... As lucky. Oh. Hubbard's little body was found on a rooftop in East Harlem, where he was living. Oh. Hubbard was stabbed to death, and he was badly mutilated. His penis was also carried off by the killer. Now, come on. I've heard of trophies, like getting trophies, but that's ridiculous. So, shortly after that, another little boy, Luis Ortez, age nine, was found in March. The killer slaughtered this little boy, pretty much the same way as uh, the other victims. And he once again took a souvenir from the boy. And what a sick, sick person. That's sick. So police, obviously, the New York... I've never heard this. This is unreal. So police, New York police were starting to panic big time because they realized they had three dead children, one severely injured, and a killer on the loose with absolutely no leads. Wow. Or any understanding as to what the heck he right. was doing. The only lead that they ended up getting was from the survivor, whose description of the killer was that he was either Spanish or Italian. Okay. His skin was neither dark nor fair. (laughs) And he may have a limp. He wasn't short or tall. So average with a limp. The little boy, too, he was 10, the one that survived. So, you know, to them, everybody's tall. Right. Oh, that poor baby. Here's another one. August 17th, 1973, Stephen Cropper, age eight, was found murdered. Now, the death of Cropper appeared to break the killer's pattern. Cropper fit the victim profile perfectly. He was an eight-year-old boy. Mm -hmm. And while he had been murdered on a rooftop, he had not been stabbed. He had a slashed artery in his arm and in his chest. The body was not sexually mutilated, and the weapon that the killer used was a razor blade instead of a knife. His genitals were still intact. So it probably wasn't the same person. Police initially suspected that a second killer was responsible, but they eventually decided it was too coincidental for a pair of slashers to be killing and stalking young boys at the same time. Hmm. Now, there's a little detail that I left out of all this Mm -hmm. on purpose because I'm tricky like that. All of these boys, except for Louise Artez, were black. Hmm. Now, Louise was... Hispanic, mm-hmm. but he was very dark skinned. Mm. And there's a reason for all those. Things. Gotcha. I'm bringing it around. Bringing gotcha. It around. All these boys are around my brother's age, so they'd be in their 50s and such by now. Yeah. Late 50s. After the murder of Luis Ortez, the local community was coming together. Oh, know, they were mad. I huge uproar with mm-hmm. the kids and stuff. Public meetings were held. Um, there was a sketch that was kind of developed. Not very good for well, a 10 year old, but you know. Um, it was uh, sent to all the places, sent to all the local communities, all the stores. There was even a video that was made and distributed warning children to stay away from strangers. Wow. So the beginning of stranger danger. A task force was developed to track down the suspect. They distributed flyers, knocked on doors, poured through the police records. They interviewed over 150 possible suspects. They even consulted with Interpol on the possibility of an international child wow. molester slash killer. Local children had picked up the name Charlie Chopoff and it stuck with them. Right. Sort of like the boogeyman or things like right. that. So it was kind of like a... Better watch it. Charlie Chopoff yes. will get, get you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So after Stephen Cropper's murder, the search intensified. A suspect was apprehended. I'm sorry. A suspect was apprehended and named in the press as L. Gonzalez. L, like the letter L, mm-hmm. not naming his first name. 
He was reported to have been seen loitering in the area when one of the abductions occurred. Hmm. Did I say abductions correctly? I think so. Witnesses were called to the police station. This is interesting. Okay. You know that police, the pressure on them had to be intense. Oh, I could only imagine. So witnesses were called into the police station, but did not confirm his identity. He was about to be let free, but a mob of protesters formed around the station. Having been made aware of his identity, the public was convinced that this man was indeed the perpetrator and the killer of these sweet little boys. Police... Put barricades around the precinct. Right. But the protesters climbed over the barriers <gasps> and scaled the roofs and police cars and all wow. that. Wow. So there was kind of like a little mini riot. So the police decided that they'd have to sneak Gonzalez out the station and they disguised him as a policeman. Ah, well, there you go. They dressed him up in a um, uniform and had him walk outside, escorted by the other officers while covering his face. That. Uh, was he the one that they later said did it? Well, then poor guy. I mean, could you imagine? So the crowd apparently wasn't fooled by this little shenanigan. They continued to demand to see the killer. Traffic was blocked off by the mob, the mob of people. Not right. Mafia. And news cameras began to gather, knowing that something was going on. Despite all the attention, Gonzalez managed to make it out of the area. and um, He probably had to like move and change his name and all that other kind of yeah, stuff, they too. Him. They named him. They named him. Why... What? Mm. Weird, right? So the people eventually broke apart, but the community was on high alert. Oh, high, yeah. Keeping an eye out. A man who resembled the suspect, Sketch, was chased out of a neighborhood and into the river. A few weeks after Stephen Cropper's murder, Daniel Olivo was charged with molesting a five-year-old boy after luring him into a secluded area in a nearby park. The boy escaped and ran to his father, and Olivo was discovered hiding in some bushes and subsequently arrested. Right. He fit the suspect's profile. He had medium skin tone, walked with a limp. However, the police found that his movements of, of where and when did not match up with the murders, so he was eventually dismissed. Let go. Right. So the killer took a little break, only to strike again, May 1979. But this time, he made a mistake. He let the little boy get away. Ah. Uh... Neighbors, aware of all this stuff going on, right. really kept a keen eye on the kids and the neighbors. They jumped into action at the sight of this little boy running from a man who and right. was screaming for help. They caught and held the suspect until the police arrived. Wow. Erno Soto, uh-huh. you know, the name that was the, name the very first I, that, one, that rings a bell. Was charged with attempted kidnapping and then... Immediately suspected of the Charlie Chopoff murders. No. Under questioning, Soto cracked. He claimed that God had instructed him oh, God. to turn little boys into little girls. What? Little boys into little girls. Okay. So this was seen as proof that um, the guy, that, that they he had some intel. Like he had some information about the, the boys and stuff. Um, okay. Okay. Police had called in the earlier survivor of the attacks, but the kid did not pick him out of the lineup. He could not really? pick him out. But guess what? Again, under high pressure, and you know, I'm sure it's really hard to be a police officer, especially oh, yeah. with, like, murdering of kids. So, and you've already had one mob yeah. attack your precinct. So the police just went out and found somebody. Oh, no. Who who happened to see Soto with Stephen Cropper on the day it was murdered? Found, in parentheses, meaning, like, you know. Right do this for me and I'll do this for you kind of thing. Yes. The case doesn't get wrapped up so nice and neatly. Right. We would all like. Soto was found too mentally unstable to stand trial. I would think so. All that hard work the police put in, getting him arrested and finding him and all that. just went All out the, the briberies. Yeah. Went out the window. So Soto is still in a mental institution in New York. The case is still open, but there was no more Charlie Chopoff murders following Soto being taken into custody. Wow. There's some interesting little little side notes for you. Mm-hmm. The thing is this. Soto's wife had left him for a few years before right. the murders I wonder why. Hmm. happened. Mm-hmm. Then they attempted a reconciliation in 1969. But he had found out that during their separation, she had begun seeing somebody mm-hmm. and had a baby. <gasps> a little black boy baby. Oh. Both he and his wife were Puerto Rican. Mm-hmm. He pretended not to care, apparently, but as the boy's eighth birthday rolled around, his behavior grew increasingly 
erratic. Um, he, in fact, had to be committed to the Manhattan State Hospital in 1969 and 1970. The man, right? Not the boy. Yeah. The yeah. Man. He would eventually be hopping in and out at sporadic intervals for treatment. Eventually, he would end up bouncing in and out of the um, mental hospital at various times. However, they believe that he found his primary relief by stalking small boys on New York's city streets. Wow. You have to consider that if Soto was mentally incapable of standing trial, right? a few things have to be considered. He did have an alibi for one of the killings, at mm -hmm. least one of the killings, and that checked out. He was, in fact, in the mental institution right? at that time. However, officials at the hospital did provide an alibi for him, stating mm -hmm. that, yes, he was here on that day that the Cropper slang happened. But sometimes Mr. Soto would slip away from the facility unnoticed oh. for a while. After they determined that he was doing this, he was, you know, under close, he was kept under closer guard. I would hope so. so but just, that was before that they even thought he was correct. a harm to others before. Correct. Yeah. So despite the lack of evidence, investigators still believe that he is probably, most likely, the correct suspect. Mm-hmm. They, Seems like it would be. The murder stopped after his arrest, and there's no, n nothing else has ever happened about that. However, due to his mental instability, he's never faced trial and likely will never face trial for right. all those murders. Wow. If he is really mentally unstable, could his confession be truthful? I don't know. And how, how, much, how much pressure did they put on him? You know? I don't know. Just question. Did they force the confession on him? I don't know. Did they, what happened to those trophies? Did he eat them? Okay, that's another Did little he... thing. I'm, I'm to... Apparently one of the, um, I'm so sorry, men and boys out there, one of the penises were found later in an area park where these boys were playing with it. They didn't know what it was. Oh. Ugh. I guess That was before hand sanitizer. It would you, be like a finger. You need a lot more than hand sanitizer. No, but... I know. But still, that that's, re... so we would just take it off and throw it away i mean that was that was something that i saw now i, I could whether that was true or not you yes, don't know that yeah. was just oh god <laughs> not funny apparently. could you imagine no i don't like it what are you playing with bobby i don't know look at this flap 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 flap, <laughs> flap. that's terrible terrible wow i wonder if he yeah that's a good question i mean just because like have you been around people that are really um, not mentally fit? And right. some of the stuff that they say and do, if you could... But then the murders did stop, so... But, but why would But his... if you were a killer, and let's think about this. If you were a killer and you were killing people, and somebody, somebody, the police took somebody into custody, right? And they said that this is the killer. That's that's your get-out-of-jail-free card. So Literally, wouldn't you, wouldn't yeah. You, wouldn't you be mm, step back and, and stop your killing? Or move. Or change or Go thing? somewhere else right? to, yeah. I don't know, but he he would have had to have been some mentally incompetent before. I find he it did, hard. Because he started popping in and out of the hospitals in 1969. No, but I find it hard to believe that his wife having an affair during a separation would that resulted in a child. I have a hard time believing that that would be the catalyst to his entire mentally disabled. Well, it's not. It's no, I know there was something else wrong with him. So I wonder if anything else beforehand happened. And because the wife had the child and the child was black, that put his fascination on black boys. But why would he want to change black boys to girls? Did he wish well, he said God told him to. Yeah. I don't know. That's weird. Right. That's weird. Very. Wow. Charlie Chopoff, come on. You couldn't come up with a better name, people? Seriously. Well, I wonder if it just... Because normally it's the journalist that gives them the monikers. Uh -huh. So I wonder if it just was slang and dribble that happened to be on the street. And um, Well, we like slang and dribble. We and apparently love they do, too. Stri yeah, we do. Uh -huh. That's our favorite. Slang. Shame on you. Yeah. Sorry. We shall only speak Sometimes the Queen's I, English. I, I like the slang only because I think it's kind of funny. That's one of like totes and adorbs. Mm -hmm. Sitch. I cut words off because it's annoying. And so, like, you know. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. Right? Who cares? 
Wow. Okay. That was, I'd never heard of Charlie Chopoff before. That was pretty amazing. Not amazing. You know. You're bad at playing. You're just bad at words. I'm bad at words. Words are really hard. All right, Jen. Well, remember. That was good. Lock your doors. Keep passing by those open windows. Oh, bye-bye. Love ya. Six weeks. Six weeks later. Six weeks later. (laughs) Six weeks later. That always reminds me of SpongeBob. Didn't you say that? Wait, well, hold on. Didn't you say the second one was gutted? Mm hmm. And he still survived? Mm hmm. Really? Yeah. So when you go read this, all these people are like, well, what? I got to run out. Yeah. Wow. But I guess they found him in time to, you know. He was still in to shove his guts back but in. He and not even have a penis. What I know. I don't know. He's a soprano in the choir now. All oh, God's creatures got a place in the choir. Yeah, you can cut okay, that out. But no. That's so tiny. Well, yeah. Um, I mean, whoops, I said that. I meant like little guy, a little person. These are little, yeah, no, I know. That's why, yeah. Yeah, Wording is important. It's very important, just like fonts. So, 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 if I say so one more time, I'm going to, I'm going to chop my own. That's your mafia name. So, it is. is. Camille. So. Hey, so. Hey, so. Drives me crazy. Drives me crazy. I'm just <laughs> mouth chomper, Jen, and so Camille. I'm the smacker. Oh, smacker! Yeah, I'm good. the smacker. smacker and so. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, that's good. I like that. After the murder of Louise Artez, the local community is it Louise or it'd be Louis? Louis L U I S or Luis 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 like on Sesame Street. Yeah. Luis, yeah. That's okay. what I've been saying, haven't I? I Louise? thought you said Louise, but it doesn't matter. I could be my Ortiz. hearing. I wonder if that's still going on today. If anybody's in New York and has ever heard the boogeyman story of Charlie Chopoff, give us a holler. It'd be interesting to know. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Delete that, Camille. <laughs> but it still could be. Did I say abductions correctly? I think so. Here's some... Let me talk about this stuff. So, 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 <laughs> so a couple things we need to discuss here. So, so a couple things we need to, so a couple things we need to discuss here. So, so local community. Is it Louise or it'd be Louis? Louis. L-U-I-S. Or Louise. Louise. Louise, like on Sesame Street. Yeah. Louise. Yeah. That's okay. what I've been saying, haven't I? Louise. I thought you said Louise, but it doesn't matter. I could be my Ortiz. hearing. I wonder if that's still going on today. If anybody's in New York and has ever heard the boogeyman story of Charlie Chopoff, give us a holler. It'd be interesting to know. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Delete that, Camille. <laughs> but it still could be. Did I say abductions correctly? I think so. Here's some. I'm going to talk about this. So, 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 so. <laughs> so, a couple things we need to discuss here. So. So a couple things we need to so a couple things we need to discuss here. So so.